uh, 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 uh. Here's the thing. I've been doing powerlifting or strength specific training now for the past eight years or so. And in that time, I've taken my squat from about four or five to 815. I've taken my bench from 275 to 562. And I've taken my deadlift at just about 881 pounds. During that time, I've also had the privilege of being a full-time strength coach. So I've been doing strength coaching as my job for the past four years or so. During that time, I learned a bunch about a lot of the problems that plague athletes. And one of the biggest ones is plateaus. If you like search how to get over a plateau on Google or YouTube, you'd find a bunch of different stuff. The things that are most covered, I would assume are technique, better programming, different things like that. For me, one of the things which I think is crucial, which people often look over, is the art of building and maintaining momentum in training. Now, the term momentum in physics is pretty easy to like describe, right? Now, in training, it's a little bit more difficult to quantify exactly what is momentum. If you were to ask me, it's sort of the feeling of predictable progress. Your training gets to a point where it's like you almost know what is going to happen. It almost seems like everything is just coming very naturally to you and you're not forcing anything. That is what I would call momentum. Me personally, over the last, you know, however long I've been training, I've developed a system where I allow myself to build more momentum in my training. And that is what I wanna share with you guys today. Very quick caveat to this um, entire video or the methodology that I'm about to share with you guys is that it mostly works for more like modern RP based type training. So if your training involves RP and even a bit of percentage work um, or even like RIR to be honest, this method will work for you and it's work for a bunch of the guys that I do coach. The methodology or the mindset, and honestly, this may sound corny, but I, I termed it this specifically for this video so you guys could really understand. It's called AGWA. A-G-W-A. In AGWA, the A, the first A, stands for analyze and understand. The G stands for goal set. The W stands for work backwards. And the last A stands for assess and adjust. I took down a couple notes based on each one of these steps in the AGWA. And I'm gonna go through basically the notes, then I'm gonna hop into the sample program that I have here on my laptop. I'm gonna share my screen as well so you guys can see sort of exactly how, um, you know, I would go about implementing each one of these steps. The A, analyze and understand. You wanna take a look at the importance of each day. You wanna take a look at the importance of each movement. You also wanna understand what type of movement should be pushed. You wanna understand what type of phase you are in. You wanna understand what is the overall goal of the phase um, and how has your past training been. And you also wanna ask questions, say coach if needed. It's sort of like just un understanding your training on a more macro level as opposed to um, just like the micro day-to-day -day level. The real purpose and the objective here is realistically just to work on my technique, you know? Similarly with like pause squats, high bar tempo squats. Um, and this is why it's important to communicate with the coach if you have one because you want to understand the purpose of each movement, understand what should be pushed, what shouldn't be pushed, and that's going to uh, get you to a more macro perspective. Maybe it might even be a situation where you are in a block where the goal of this entire block is not even to really push anything. Maybe you're just coming out of comp. Uh, maybe you deep off season, different things like that. Let's hop into this program here and I'll show you guys exactly how I would go about this step. With this sample program here, that you guys could see um, you can see the days are listed out on the left and then the weeks go across on the right so this program is fully RP based is really just like a example that I did up pretty quickly um, it's not necessarily something that I <laughs> I actually don't even write my regular programs like this but yeah hopefully you guys can understand day five is pretty much irrelevant because you can see there that is pretty much all accessories um, obviously understanding accessories is important as well um, for example you wouldn't want to push like a heavy pen lay row right before your deadlifts but um, more so we're looking at the main main compound movements so for example here in the analyze and understand step I have pause squats here but I have my regular squats later in the week maybe I don't want
want to push my post squats. Also, I would try to understand what type of phase this is on the whole. Is this more of a volume phase? Is this strength? Um, do I need to push? Is my goal to put on mass? Is it just simply to feel out heavier loads? This is where I would talk to my coach or I would actually even talk to myself if I was designing a phase for myself in this step. Um, so just simply looking at it, I could see things on a macro perspective so I could see something like okay this deadlift here in week one yes I have a single but I have singles throughout in every single week um, so maybe I don't want to go too aggressive for that first single there and push it all the way up to the maximum RPE um, maybe I want to undershoot just a little bit you know um, <clears throat> and this way is also important to understand yourself maybe the type of person where you need to take smaller jumps on a weekly basis so you want to be more aggressive etc um, but this is actually going to tie into the next two steps here but analyzing and understanding and analyzing is basically taking a look at your program on a macro perspective and not just oh day one week one what could i do here you know understanding our macro perspective cool the next step in the process is the g and this stands for goal set the things i have written down here is how do you goal set Basically, this is going to be based on your previous training or your previous PRs and I'll dive into that a little bit more deeply when we get into the program. How ambitious should a goal be? This is really going to be based again on your previous PRs. Um, milestone numbers shouldn't influence your decisions. Why RP calculators on one rep max uh, calculators should only be used as a guide. Why you should undershoot your goals and leave room for momentum. And what movement should you set goals for? The goal setting portion is basically you go into the last week of the block and really just setting goals for yourself for the main movements in terms of what you want to hit. So for example, um, let's say if I, I have like a deadlift single, a squat single and a bench single or top sets on each of those lifts or anything like that, I would want to go to the end of the block and set goals. How would I set those goals? Let's hop into the program and I'll answer that question specifically. So looking at the program here, um, how I would pick out things I want to set goals for is basically all the heavy top sets or variation top sets. And realistically, if you're really nitty gritty and you have the time, like I do, and you know, at this point in, in my powerlifting career, I'm like very, very dedicated. So I set goals for every single movement, including accessories. I know Bob, he does as well. I, I think I think he does. I think in, in some of his YouTube videos, he said that he does, right? Basically, as I said, you could do this for every single movement and I'll show you guys uh, like something separate but here I'm gonna show you guys the paused deadlift I'll show you guys the bench the squat and the deadlift starting off with the pause deadlift here how would I set a goal for this particular movement now I would set my goal for this particular movement based on what is the purpose of the movement if I'm the type of person let's say I pull like a very technical sumo then maybe I I push this movement a little bit harder than somebody who pulls like a conventional or something like that or if this was a deficit deadlift for somebody who pulls conventional maybe they need a little bit more rest maybe they're super heavyweight they won't be pushing this movement as hard and it would more so be um, technical or in order to get some sort of carryover into their main lift as opposed to just this movement being you know like a standalone stimulus if you understand what i mean so i would set this goal here fairly conservatively for me because i pull conventional and a heavy pause deadlift early in the week would really really tax me so I would maybe set this goal as not to even PR so let's say for example my best pause deadlift single is 750 I would more so be prioritizing my main deadlift later in the week so I would set this maybe somewhere around 705 or maybe something like you know 90 or 95 percent of my pause deadlift max on that topic as well you guys could see here lower down on the max deadlift how would i set this goal here for singles now this is going to be heavily based on my previous training and what type of phase that i am in and also my previous prs those three things are going to come together to let me know what i can set this goal as so let's say for example i um leading into a competition or this is the block right before the block leading into the competition and my training has been going really well and let's say for example my PR was 838 pounds right I would say okay my training has been going well 
and you know last block I hit X I think that this block I should be able to chip my PR so how I would set that up is I would simply say okay I'm gonna go 10 bongs over my PR in this case I might even think that I might have 20 pounds over my PR but I would go 10 pounds instead of 20 to leave room for momentum you never really want to absolutely absolutely max out sometimes it happens and is not but it's never really the goal to absolutely just go berserk and just grind out a rep and, and take everything that you have there unless maybe in competition and you need that lift for some particular reason so i would set the goal somewhere in between my current pr and what i think i could hit right so something right in there where is a comfortable single and realistically I wouldn't disregard the RP, obviously RP8 there is important, but I would give myself leeway. So if it is RP 7.5 or if it is RP 8.5 or even RP 9 is where I would cap it. I would take it just because it's a PR, is going to build confidence and again I would only take that based on the day and I would also tie into the last point which is assess and adjust. So when we get there I'll show you guys how we go about doing that. On the squat, similarly, I have poor squats earlier in the week and then I have regular squats. So for me, again, I move fairly heavy loads, so I don't necessarily push secondary days, but for somebody else who maybe is a highly technical lifter, they might need to push both days. So I would set that pause squat a lot more conservatively below the RP. So even though it says RP8 here, I would take this at something like a RP, honestly, 7 or 6.5 um, and just undershoot all the way through the block and really just work on technique, positioning, technique, positioning and allow that to carry over into my main lift. And then for the squat, same thing. Let's say, for example, with the squat, I wasn't in a great position. Let's say last block, um, my squat, I failed the last single of my last block or the last double or the last triple of my last block. I would say, you know what? Even though my PR double is, let's say, 804, it's not, but let's say 804, I would set this below my PR double just to allow myself to rebuild that momentum because remember the goal is not necessarily to be strong right right now the goal is to set yourself up to consistently gain strength over time consistently gain strength over time so that's always the goal that's always the mindset and uh, the most important part of that is just simply setting your goals appropriately and I would go through every lift like this and, and think about it like that and you're also thinking about it again in the context of all other lifts and not necessarily just okay what could I possibly hit here because if you're maxing out on every lift you're going to get to a point where you burn out and uh, you know it's just not going to be a good time so that's basically the goal set portion of this um, hopefully I explained that well but that's basically my mindset around that so work backwards this is the w in the agua method work backwards so points i've written down here how do you work backwards that's exactly what i'm going to address uh, when we get into the program itself um, how should you space your jumps on a weekly basis again i'll get into that why rp matters but it also doesn't really matter and your risks of jumps being too big or too small so let's get right into the program this one is best explained in the program as a matter of fact wait let, let's not so in terms of working backwards this is what i do after i set a goal i just simply work backwards and make even jumps on a weekly basis the reason why i do this is because the rp matters but once you set reasonable goals and you are on top of all your variables the rp works itself out so for example if i have rp five six seven eight um throughout a block and i set my last goal at something i think i could do for a eight or eight point five or something like that and i take reasonable jumps nothing too big or nothing too small um on a week-to-week -week basis and that's and i stay on top of my variables i'm going to be somewhere in that range for each week and RP is not an exact science. You don't necessarily need to like exactly be on RP six in week one or else your progress is gonna fall apart. And that's the, the entire like 
mindset behind this. To be honest, I almost never look at RPE and I more so go with this method. The entire like thought process behind this is that hitting the RPE directly on the head or yeah there's RP6 or a slight overshoot or a slight undershoot it it genuinely almost doesn't matter <laughs> like really you know um and that might sound weird to say like from the perspective of a coach but I have a lot of guys who make progress and they utilize some form of this method and RPE is really just a guideline and, and the last uh, point in this which is assess and adjust is where you really get more of like an idea as to like where RP ties in but in the grand scheme of things in terms of work backwards how would I go about doing that so what I would do is after setting my goals for the final week and again I set these goals smartly I didn't just set these goals arbitrarily or what I would like to hit or it wasn't based on like a milestone number of like oh you know what I, I really want to hit X or, or something like that I set these goals with a calm clear head and now I'm working backwards from them so for me I usually recommend that somebody take jumps anywhere in the range of maybe two to four percent on a weekly basis four percent is really really high but two to four percent on a weekly basis is what I would recommend people take jumps <clears throat> so for me on the squat I have a squat of 800 pounds so 1% there would be um, 8 pounds and 2% would be 16 3% would be 24 so I might take somewhere around the 3% range somebody else might take somewhere around the 4% range but I might take somewhere around the 3% range and go with 25 pound jumps on a weekly basis or maybe like 10 kilo jumps on a weekly basis right so for my squats here in the program you can see I want to finish off with 793 which is 360 kilo so here I would probably go 771 here I would probably go 750 and then here I would probably go I don't even know what the number is there 727 right I think there's actually 749 yes so this is what my jumps would look like here on a weekly basis with this particular program it's so simple it's so easy so straightforward and more than likely all these weeks here week uh five six and uh the week at five week at six the week at seven will more than likely be somewhere close to the rp because i selected a smart number for that week four and that that, that is basically it and you do the same thing for all of these somewhere between two to four percent just depending on how you feel um, I would probably recommend most people honestly stay around that three percent range just because it allows you to not be too fatigued let's say for example I wanted to take one percent jumps each week right or um, you know that's like eight pounds or let's say it was actually even like slightly less right so let's say I did here um, 782 um, then 782, 771, and then uh, 760, right? Let's say I did these. This is aggressive, whereas week one and week two, week, th week three would more likely be too hard and it would fatigue me too quickly. So when you're selecting your jumps, you want to select big enough jumps that you um, don't get fatigued too quickly in the block because if I my end goal is 793 which is like let's say a PR double or is just below my PR if I'm going so hard like super super hard from week one then by the time I get to week four I'm gonna be burnt out but I also don't want to select two bigger jumps whereby the week to week performance is unpredictable so for example let's say I was to go with bigger jumps here let's say I did 750 here 716 here and then uh i don't know 672 here that might be off but you guys will understand what i mean right let's say for example these were my jumps these jumps would be doable for me but for somebody else they would be tough because it gets to a point where it's like 760 uh sorry 672 doesn't really give you a good understanding as to like where you are for the block so maybe you want to make the jumps a little bit smaller in this scenario um, but yeah this is basically how you work backwards it's very very simple you want to be somewhere in that sweet spot the two to four percent range 
on a weekly basis with your jumps and just make even jumps on a weekly basis this again highly ties in to this last point of assess and adjust but i will show you guys that in the next point the last point here the last a in a g w a agua is assess and adjust the points i've written down here listening to your body rp considerations on a weekly basis and external circumstances and your role they play in this framework the assess and adjust is where rp actually comes into play at the end of the day rp based training is meant to be somewhat subjective and is also meant to allow you to have an uh, a measure of how hard you should push um, given different circumstances now that's a great tool that you guys could use and should use um, on a weekly basis but what my method does the agua method is i think it brings a little bit more objectivity to rp um, and that is why i like it personally and i recommend it to guys the thing about it is like a lot of people get carried away with numbers right and sometimes you set goals for yourself like we did in the last couple steps which is the goal set and work backwards and stuff like that and you just completely just go tunnel vision on those goals which is great but stuff happens you know what i mean like sometimes you're gonna have a very rough week you're gonna be under recovered and you're not gonna be able to hit the exact numbers that you want to hit and you have to be open to making adjustments on the fly um, and that's where rp comes into place so for example let's say you have an extremely long day where you usually train at 3 p.m and you end up training at uh, 11 p.m that day obviously you're not going to be as strong as you would like to be let's say you usually train at 3 p.m and you end up training at 5 a.m that day obviously you're not going to be as strong as you usually uh, uh let's say you know you just had you got in 20,000 steps that day again you're not going to be as strong as you usually are and and you know just different things like that this is where you listen to your body and you listen to rp and you know is, this is a difficult step for most people because it is very easy to um, become stubborn and just like you know i have to hit this to set me up for the later weeks but the good thing about rp is that once it is you are hitting that rp range regardless of the weight on the bar it is still going to set you up <clears throat> to make a bigger jump next week even if you dial it back this week so it's not something to worry about and assessing and adjusting is very important now on the flip side actually where assessing and adjusting could be cool and very easy to do is in those later weeks for example let's say i have a five week block in week four week five or in a four week block in week four particularly if you feel great um and there are times i've felt great you know in like uh, the last week of a block you could just you could send it you know what i mean um and obviously in the context of of where you are in training let's say for example um you are you know very very close to that competition it may not make sense sending it and this is something you need to be responsible with and more mature so i wouldn't recommend this like just sending it randomly for guys who aren't that experienced in the sport but for people who are more experienced this could be a good tool because you don't always feel great you don't always have that juice to hit a pr or anything like that and this is something where you know when you feel good on a day you should take advantage of it because the prs be, uh, come less and less often you know obviously the older you get any more experience you become in the sport right so this is where the assess and adjust comes into play and also i do recommend just sending it on like a week one or week two save it for later in the block and really take the time to learn how your body works and how you really feel when you feel good and how you really feel when you feel bad you know over the course of a couple of years as opposed to just being that guy who straight out the gate you know first six months of powerlifting you're just sending it all the time because you listen to this video don't be that guy to finish off here i have a couple caveats um i know this video was long but i really want you guys to get this knowledge and understand my uh mindset so the caveats are a hectic schedule makes this much harder to adhere to so we spoke in the assess and adjust step um about you know sort of like playing it by air and everything like that if it is your uh, schedule is hectic every single week then this is not going to be 
great for you because you're gonna have to be constantly assessing and adjusting if you're the type of person where maybe you have a very mundane boring job or um you know maybe you're a kid and you're in school and you sort of like have a very regular schedule or you're just the type of person maybe you're just powerlifting full time like me you could adhere to this pretty well because everything is predictable every week is more or less the same so one week sort of like predetermines the next and predetermines the next etc right and one block is also predetermines the next and similar to that as opposed to somebody who you know maybe they 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 all over the country they uh taking trips they're flying out xyz for, for work um this may not be for them it a work hours unpredictable they're training at different times of the day this may not be for that type of person and they may be better off just simply adhering to RP on a weekly basis and not setting these kind of like expectations on themselves um, to perform. Next thing is fatigue management and doing your days on the same day is crucial. So even if you have the time, if you're the type of person where one day, uh, one week, sorry, like week one, you have day one on Monday, we, uh, day two on Tuesday, and then the next week you have day one on uh tuesday and then day two on thursday right this is not going to work for you because you are introducing more variables than you should and ideally you want everything to be as predictable as possible for this for with, for this to work uh, for you honestly with any type of training approach that you're doing don't change your days keep the days the same um, every single time and that's gonna give you the best results also if you're cutting weights and you're having like obviously fluctuations in your strength this could become unpredictable because you're setting certain goals for the end of the block and you may be at different body weight different calories different things like that so this is mainly for people who are just sort of like training at maintenance and their life is also more or less at maintenance if you understand what i mean right so yeah this video was long hopefully you guys got some uh got some value from this for real you know what i mean um i've been wanting to record this for a while you guys see me out here like i'm literally this is where i come to like walk and get steps in so yeah hopefully the audio was good it's pretty breezy and i will see you guys in the next video